All right, we've covered a lot of different methods of making yourself some mortises, things like that. I've shown you guys a little bit with a chisel. Uh, didn't really get into technique too much, but uh, you know, I understand doing these videos that not everybody has a chain mortiser, not everybody has a two inch auger, not everybody has a boring machine for doing these old timber frames. So if all you have is a chisel to do it with, it can be done. It's going to be very time consuming, I can tell you that, but uh, it works out just fine. Now typically this is a this is a brace mortise here. Typically if you're doing this with a hand chisel, you're doing it by hand or with a boring machine, you go down part way just for the flat part of the tenon, the 45 degree angle you'd actually chisel down. Now I find it just as easy to cut the entire mortise out rather than try to go through all that. That's up to you. However you do it is whatever works for you is what works. But uh, so anyway, anyway, all I do is kind of the same method as when you are doing it with a machine or anything like that. You, you lay it out. You score everything. You can use a knife. I prefer to use the chisel, especially on the end grain, because that, this is a two-inch chisel. I want a two-inch mortise. It's just an easy, easy reference for me to do that. Now, when you're going to split these uh, with the grain, you don't go too deep, because what's going to happen is this is going to act like a ramp. This bevel is going to drive you in. I've said that many times before over many videos but it bears repeating. Now I'm going to show you what I do to keep these going square when I'm doing them by hand and believe me I do not do a lot of them by hand because it just it takes forever. I do enjoy it believe it or not. Like I said in the previous video sometimes the work itself is the reward of the project and I'm a big believer in that. Alright now we get a little tiny tiny bit of checking that's actually going to throw your chisel off a little bit sometimes like I said you're only you're just scoring it I'm only putting this in maybe an eighth of an inch something like that but it works out and we're right in a right in a check right there so I want to be kind of gentle because I don't want to split anything out past granted with a timber this size you're probably not going to split it too much one way or the other now when I go to do this, some people will go and try to scoop out a big long strip at once. I've done that myself before. I find the easiest way to keep it going accurately and easier, believe it or not, is just start half inch, three eighths, whatever increments. You don't have to be Hercules. The first, the first part is going to be the long part because you're taking time to make sure you're within your lines, but once you get a little bit nibbled out, it gets a lot easier. Now if your chisel's good and sharp, and if you can judge by the bald spot on my arms, the, uh, the chisel is good and sharp, this will go much easier for you. It's like anything else. Sharper your tools, easier it is. Be prepared too. This is no fun if you have knots within your mortise. So if you have the luxury of avoiding a lot of knots by having long timbers, you will do well. You'll do well to avoid them. I'm doing it like this tonight, believe it or not. I didn't feel like dragging the chain closer out, but I still wanted to do some work. So, we've got a set of lines stretched all the way across here. We've got some curves with the chisel. So, now I'm going to do, I work a lot, of, most of the time I work with a bevel down because you do not remove as much material. You just, 
I'm doing is just scraping those off. You know, and you see where I went. Didn't have that score deep enough. Either. Now, your chisel's good and sharp, especially when you're closer to the top like this. You can work it down just fine. Let's see how I slipped there. Went a little past, and that's something you want to watch out for. The deeper you get, the easier it gets up to a point. I know that sounds kind of dumb. Now the other thing I do when I'm doing this, when I'm scoring out all around the outside of this mortise, I try to keep that chisel as square as I can to the face of the timber both ways. And what that does for me, it really does a good job keeping everything square. And at the end of the day, that's what we want. You're going to see a lot of historical frames when they pull the old joints apart. When you're talking, talking the days before they bored a lot of them, they did a lot of them with a chisel or cleaned them out a lot with a chisel. Pre-mortise machine, let's just put it that way. A lot of times you see the bottom of the mortise, it'll start narrow up top. And then it'll kind of look like a fishtail. And we try to avoid that. But that's why I don't try to take too much at once. You get a lot of that when you're trying to remove a lot of material. So, now we've got that. And I'm just going to start this way. Yeah, time to make a new mallet head. This one finally split on me. Damn thing. Not always the way. Now you don't have to beat the hell out of these to do it. If you're beating the hell. If you're beating the hell out of this to get it done, sharpen your chisel. I mean pine is obviously much easier than oak and stuff like that. You just take smaller bites when you're working with that stuff. I'm not hitting this hard. I'm letting the chisel do the work in the mallet. You'll be a lot less tired that way. Especially if you're like me and you've been so inactive for so long that uh, you're trying to build your stamina back up. And then when I get close to this end, I swap the chisel around. One a little there. Same thing. And I'll do just real gentle, real easy. Go against the grain or whatever, go against what I just cut out that way. He's a liar. Kids. I can't wait to go back to work. So as I go, I just keep scoring this down. And keeping in mind where your edge is. Try not to tip the chisel one way or the other. You're trying to get it to go down straight. And when you have a clear sight down the mortise, it's a lot easier to do it. Now to be honest with you, this is a slow boat to China doing it this way. But I actually do not mind doing this one bit. And the other thing you'll tell if you start out good and square, you'll be able to just lay your chisel across there. As long as you have a, a more modern chisel, if you have an older uh, 
laminated chisel where they have the tool steel laminated to the bottom of it to the bevel of the chisel. Now a lot of times those are a little bit sway back and you've got to watch that if you're using it. It's still doable, you just have to check it with your combination square a little more often. I follow my chisel quite a bit and I have pretty good results doing that. But uh, like I said, this is not my normal method. You guys know that, you've seen me long enough on here. But, like I said, not everybody has a thousand dollar chain mortiser kicking around. Not everybody has all the tools, but theoretically, theoretically, you can, uh, you could build one of these buildings with nothing more than a handsaw and a couple of chisels, and you will need an auger for pegs. It's usually a one inch or something like a little bit smaller depending on the size of your tenons. But um, it's really it's really not that hard to do it this way. It's more just time consuming than anything. But I will tell you. I do find that this is the cleanest method, and uh, I'd love to see chime in or even do a video on this subject because he's very knowledgeable as Timber Doodles, or maybe Jim Rogers, I'd love to see him throw a video of how they cut the mortises if they were doing it by hand. Um, But anyway, you're getting the idea. And it's funny, the deeper you get, the more material you start removing quicker. And I keep flirting with knocking that piece off right there. And Jim, if you're watching this before you chime in about cutting the 45, I did cover that. So I'll wait till I get about an inch and a half down or so before I start checking for square. But like I said, as long as I'm paying attention, over time you do enough of them, you get a pretty good eye for what's square and what's not. See, now I'm getting a little wide there. That's all right. Decent right there, pretty much where the tenon of that brace is really going to sit. And if you notice when you're cutting with the bevel down, like I do, a lot of times the chisel is going to want to drive itself up a little bit. I don't mind that. I actually prefer that because I know I'm not going to take too much material out at once. It's been a long time since we've done a good tutorial type video. You know, I don't talk as much in the videos anymore because uh, we've just covered so much ground on this stuff for so long. I mean, we're going channel's been running two years come January and uh, this ground I have covered a lot and I don't mind covering it over and over again because you get a lot of new viewers you know they a lot of them don't go back and watch your old videos they'll just kind of watch what's current and especially with this style of a project <clears throat> now you're also going to find it difficult 
sometimes, not always. Sometimes you'll find it difficult even if you have a knot farther out because the grain pattern around that knot sometimes spreads out quite a bit. Obviously the bigger the knot, the wider that area that the grain's going to be swirled around. It's going to be kind of goofy. But this one right here doesn't really affect what we're doing in here. That one's small enough. So this is a nice, it's in the bad timber from the Amish. And uh, the only reason I bought them, I was trying to save, save some time. You know, but anyway, now that we're getting a little deeper, I get a little more aggressive with my material removal. As I figure, we already have a good start. But now you can remove a good three quarters of an inch to an inch at a time. And I can run this a little straighter down. There's also a good way of doing it. Like I said, with this chisel being a two inch chisel, <coughs> I know as I go down into this mortise, if I could do what I'm doing all the way across this mortise, I know that tenon's going to fit in there. Now I do, I do shave a little bit more out of the mortise than the two inch. Because if your tenons are too tight, you're just going to end up splitting splitting wood trying to put them together. You don't you don't want them sloppy either. You just want a nice want a nice solid fit to where it can't have too much movement in the joint, but you don't want to have to beat the hell out of it to get it together. Now, if anybody's comparing notes, how long this takes compared to a chain mortiser. My chain mortiser, we would have had this mortise cut by now. It's usually 5-10 minutes of mortise, if that. Probably, probably closer to 5 minutes of mortise. This way, you know, it's a good probably hour, hour and a half, depending on how diligent you're sitting here chiseling away. But again, I can't stress enough a good sharp chisel because you're severing end grain. And if you're on a time schedule, this is not the way you want to do it. And if you're like me and you're just trying to bounce back a little bit, it's perfect. Now again, I'm going to go back against the way I chiseled down, you know, where I can. Is that pretty much, I mean, I barely have to tap that stuff to get it, to get it to chip off of there. And I also find when I do it that way, especially in a longer mortise, it's a little bit easier for me to lift the chips out of there. And something else I get to watch is once in a while the chisel is going to want to tip on you, so watch that as you're chiseling too. If it starts to do that, just back it out and get another bite. Sometimes it's going to do that based on where your grain's cutting the easiest. And you'll also get a lot of that, just like a chainsaw chain, if you don't have it evenly sharpened, you're going to get a lot more laundering.
Now I'm getting a little tight in there. You can kind of see it. Now if your chisel's a little tight, you don't need to... You hardly ever have to take a whole lot off. I mean, I just shaved not much more than a paper width right there. And it took care of it. Kind of irritated I did that there. Kind of know better. But, so now we're kind of deep enough. I'm going to sight down this in just a little bit there. A little bit here. A little goofy grain there. Now before I go any deeper, because remember I'm following the sides of this mortise with the chisel, I want to make sure I'm running square. If I'm not running square, by the time I get down to the bottom, we're going to have that fishtail. And we really don't want the fishtail. Well, I guess set this like an inch. And that end's good and square. Check it across. Don't just check it one portion. We are those chips out of there. So so far we're dead nuts all the way from here around to there. I can stand to no oh, chips there again. Yeah, good there, good nuts. Okay, so I took a little bit too much out there, starting to go that way, so we're going to have to watch that the deeper we go. Same thing right there, where I just, it's not much, but it's enough where you're shallow enough into the mortise, you can correct it and get a tighter fit by the time you get to the bottom. But, anyway, I won't bore you guys with running the chisel all night, so we'll leave her there and I'll see what develops. All right, <laughs> yeah, I'm a little stiff right now, but that's okay. Stiffness means we're doing something right. We're not having jabbing pains, but we're a little sore. Been kind of up and about a lot here the last few days, but anyway, I haven't really covered techniques so much on chopping out a mortise by hand with just a chisel. Like I said, it is not my preferred method. I'm going to get a million comments saying, well, geez, why don't you... Why are you doing it like that? Drill it out, drill it out. You know, I get a lot, you know, it's funny, every time I show a different method of doing something, I'll probably get 10 comments. And they're usually from non-subscribers. About, geez, I would have done it like this, or why are you using that, or buy this, buy that. Well, I like to show other ways of doing this stuff because not everybody can afford to run out there and buy a bunch of very expensive tools, specialty tools, that they're only going to ever use for one project. So, people might be looking at chopping out a mortise with a chisel as a daunting task, but they want to do it, they want to try it. I'm trying to show that you can do it by hand if you have to. And so that's where we're at. That's, that's what we like to try to do. But uh, So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the opening drone footage. I get a lot of requests for that. So today... Uh, the boy and I, we drove out back in the truck, and I sat on the tailgate, and we ran the drone for a while today. It was, it was a lot of fun. He checked cows and fences for me, and we played with that, and uh, it's a lot of fun. But uh, I haven't. that's the first time I've been out there this, this year, way out there, so it's kind of nice. I also caught footage of an osprey for a little while, if you guys are wondering what that bird was. I waited around like 10 minutes filming the original video on that and I know the quality's not the best waiting for that thing to take off I mean we were 
50 yards from it, you know, I mean, <laughs> the damn thing wouldn't take off or nothing. Just sitting there because I wanted you guys to see how big those things are. Um, they have a nest. We, we've got transmission power poles out behind us here, and uh, they have a nest on a platform the power company put up there just for that purpose. And they're kind of neat. They're here every summer. They, they come back in the spring, and they'll stay till mid-fall or so, and then they migrate. But uh, they're beautiful birds. They eat fish. And so the St. Lawrence right out there, they have plenty to eat, and you'll drive around anywhere around here, most of the roads anywhere near the river, and you're going to see a lot of those nests. Now, 10, 15 years ago, there wasn't any. I mean, uh, maybe a couple pairs here and there, and now they're definitely, they've definitely made a comeback there all over the place. So, anyway, hope you folks enjoyed it. We're going to keep going. I'm going to go in and put this damn leg up and uh, relax for a little bit, and... I will catch you guys on the next one.